Father, you're everything to us. We love you. We're glad that you're here. We just ask that you open up our eyes, open up our understanding, and let our hearts be totally good ground so that we can all receive this word. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I got a very, very short thought that God gave to me, and I hope it, to use a word that I stole from Deaconess Linda Craddock, I hope it resonates in your heart, which means it can stay, speak to you, stay and speak to you. And this is what God allowed me to, to think. And it says this, it says, today's believers accept superficial stuff in replace of true substance. Amen. We will take the stuff, superficial as it is, we'll take it instead of waiting for pure substance. Mm. And what is superficial to a recreated being is information. See, we, because we're born again, we were created in the image and the likeness of God, and now the Holy Ghost has in, in, ignited your desire to be human again. Okay, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> The Holy Ghost is trying to reignite you being human again. Because in sin, you don't act human. In sin, you act like a base animal. Always consuming, always attacking, always trying to hurt someone, always trying to bring pleasure to yourself, no matter who it costs. Amen. So I'll try one more time. Now that you're born again, the Holy Ghost is really trying to help us be human. Amen. And when we were created in the image and the likeness of God, one thing that is very vital, and you've noticed it, is relateness. Re we, we crave to be relatable. We want relationships. Even if you've gotten hurt and you became a hermit and mean and nasty, you really don't want to be mean and nasty. You just know it's comfortable for you, but if you had your way, you would have people in your life that love you and that you love back. Amen. And that's the image that can take superficial things instead of pure substance. I was challenged about three years ago with uh, Deacon Eugene. He challenged me, and I made fun of it because I didn't want to own up to what he was actually saying, that it was true, so I didn't give him no credit for it. That's what old dudes do when young dudes make them feel bad. <laughs> And what he said was, he said, Pastor, I don't understand your society. He said, if I have a friend, that friend's going to know I love him. I said, man, it's America, man. We just tell people we love him. I said, we don't love each other. You know? And he said, that's just not right. And, and I said, nah, man, relax. Just act like you're in America now. You know, because when you have a heart filled with substance, love is real. Yes. Love is not tolerant. Love is proactive. And see, I didn't want to make the whole church look bad in his eyes, so I just made him feel uncomfortable. But he never changed. And I want to bring that message to you and I today is, what substance do you have in your life? Or is it superficial? Because we're created in the image and likeness of God. Anybody heard of social media? I am not against social media. I use it as a police officer. I can find all your business out. I don't even have to use the gift of discernment. I just use the gift of your status. I can find out your sins, your shortcomings. Thank God for, yeah, social media is, is, is quicker. Why pray? You don't even have to pray for people anymore. You can find out, hey, you in trouble because you did that, you know. But because we're born again, we have a need to be social. We have a need to be social, and God gave us that need. And as long as you have the Holy Ghost, you are going to try to fulfill that need. Many times, young boys and young girls, because of sin, they, they change from having friends to 
partners. You know, young kids, ex you know, uh, under the influence of the devil, experiment with drugs and sexual immorality too early. Or, well, I shouldn't say too early. They should never do it anyhow. And that's why they can't grow up and f they ha don't have friends. Can't play sports. All their video games kill something. Because the enemy knows that that image craves relationships. You know, it craves it. God created us in his image and his likeness. And, 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 and he's not going to change it. You are going to want to be loved and to love. I say it one more time. Until Jesus comes back, you're going to want to be loved and you're going to want to love. And so Satan, knowing that human beings will put anything in there. And so now we have to ask ourselves, what have we been replacing substance with to fill that void? See, and we don't recognize, you know, it could be your job. You could be so fed up in your life that you enjoy working. <laughs> I'll say it one more time in English, Spanish, and in Portuguese. You could be so fed up in your life that you enjoy working. You should not be enjoying working, but you should work. Your job is not to reward you outside of money. Use your job. If you enjoy it, fine. That's fine. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to enjoy it. But some people go to work and don't have relationships with people. Come on. I just got to go make this money. Mean, nasty, just go make money and come home and go to sleep. The reason why, I'm not trying to say that you're not supposed to be able to enjoy your job. If you can, enjoy it. But you have to enjoy relationships. Your job's not going to last forever, but what you did to other people, that's going to last throughout eternity. And so being human, somebody say, I'm human. We will fill that void with anything that we will, that, how can I say it? And don't get mad at me. Nobody's watching me, right? I'm supposed to eat steak, potatoes, chicken, french fries, um, collard greens, food. But guess what happened? I bought some cheddar cheese popcorn. And I was hungry for food, but I grabbed the popcorn. And guess what, Deaconess Lisa? It started, oh, that, that camera fell. It started fulfilling me. Anybody still here? Yeah. It started fulfilling me. It was popcorn, superficial food. Was not real food, but it was fulfilling me. And guess what? I did not stop. I knew it wasn't food, but it was fulfilling me, so I kept eating. Wrapped up the bag, hid it in the car, <laughs> went about my business, Came out from work, saw my friend again, went back in. I was filling up on superficial instead of substance. But there was no one to stop me. See? And so guess what? I kept eating it until my stomach started telling me, you know you're not hungry because you have the wrong thing in you. All right, all right. Here it is dinner time. I'm supposed to be getting my spinach, my nice rice and gravy and T-bones, but I'm not hungry because I'm filled with superficial stuff. Paid for it later trying to go get rid of it. All right, only one person recognized what I was saying. <laughs> and we have that in our relationships. Here we are, we're supposed to be Christians, but we have superficial relationships with God. We'll watch a preacher instead of us being the preacher. Come on. We'll hear about a prayer meeting. We'll listen to a prayer meeting while we're probably writing um, something or cooking dinner while a prayer meeting is going on. Just because you're listening don't mean you're praying. See, you're allowing superficial stuff to replace stuff, substance. You know, even, uh, you know, 
my mother, you know, she, she, she's not in, on the earth anymore. My grandmother's not here anymore. But they used to make this stuffing. Now, they didn't make stuffing as superficial stuff. That stuffing was equal to the turkey. I'm talking about that's, that's, that's real stuff. I'm not talking about that box stuffing. I'm talking about you can just wake up in the morning and eat stuffing and you're happy for the week. So we got, <laughs> she up now, she wants some stuffing. <laughs> we got to get to a place where we start to look at what's been superficial that has been fulfilling. See, that's the problem. It's been fulfilling, but it's been superficial. When the fight comes, that stuff is going to burn up. Yeah. 